Jared Dillian. Now you know a rich guy. I'm Jared Dillian. This is the Jared Dillian Show. If you want to call to talk about your money, please call 844-305-7800. That's 844-305-7800. This is the Jared Dillian Show. And do you notice how my voice is very even and understated? It's very calm. There's nothing to panic about. Do not panic. If you want to call to talk about what's going on in the financial markets, tonight would be a great time to call because there's probably the most things to talk about we've ever had. And I'm sure a lot of people out there are experiencing pain. So if you want to call in, it's 844-305-7800. And we can talk about the coronavirus and all this insane stuff that is happening. I just tweeted before I went on the air. I've been doing this. When I say this, I mean I've been in the markets for 21 years, and I've seen some crazy stuff. I saw the dot-com bust. I saw the financial crisis. I saw the European debt crisis. I saw the China deval. I've seen a bunch of stuff, and this takes the cake, I have to say. This is bigger than all that stuff. We actually ha- If you know what the VIX is, the volatility index, we actually had a high all-time high, all all-time high in the VIX today, higher than the financial crisis. This is extraordinary. We th- this is extraordinary times in the market. And if your financial advisor seems kind of lost, if he's kind of at sea, then there's a reason for that. It's because he's never seen anything like this before. And the reality is nobody has seen anything like this before. Nobody is. This has never happened before. There's no playbook for this. I mean, the last time we had anything like this, it was 1918 with the flu epidemic, which killed 50 million people. And, you know, there's actually some interesting lessons from that. But in terms of financial market impact, you know, and the problem is, is that we were massively leveraged going into this thing. Like there was, you had, you had buybacks and you had trillions of debt and we just had all this leverage in the system and it's all being unwound. And I almost get the, I almost get the impression that it's not done yet. And I'd like to say that it's done, but I don't think, I really don't think it's done. I think we've yet to reach that point of capitulation, which is a scary thought. Um, but, you know, one of the things we've talked about for a long, we know we had this very long expansion for 10, 11 years. The market basically went up and it had been so long since we'd had a recession that, well, there were lots of people working in the markets who had never seen a recession before. They'd never seen a Fed rate cut. And here we have the, I mean, there's just so much to talk about <laughs> You know, on a Sunday three days before a scheduled FOMC meeting, the Fed drops the bazooka. They fire the RPG, they cut rates 100 basis points, and they start quantitative easing. And the signaling on that is terrible, right? That's actually, if you wanted to point to a cause for what happened today, and by the way, if you, in case you were trapped under something heavy, you don't know what happened today, the Dow was down 3,000 points, 12%. And um, I think that I think the reason for that was, you know, we've never seen anything like this before. And the Fed, you know, they they dropped this bazooka on a Sunday, three days before a Fed a Fed meeting, and everyone's like, "What do they know that we don't know? What what are they looking at? It must be really really bad for them to do that." So it actually caused panic. It actually was supposed to stop panic, but it actually caused panic. Oh, man, it's amateur hour. And, you know, it's, um, like I said, we've never seen anything like this before. There there actually was a pitcher in baseball. His name was Joaquin Andujar, and he had a quote. He said, you never know. You never know what's going to happen. Things pr- seemed pretty safe about a month ago. And I was sitting here pounding on the table, telling people to de-risk and I'm not doing an I told you so. I'm not. This is not the point of what I'm talking about. But what I was saying was people had too much risk. They were too heavily invested in the stock market. They needed to move the bonds. They needed to have a 35-65 portfolio. And by the way, if you had a 35-65 portfolio, you would be mostly okay. You'd be down 3 to 5% in all of this. 
And that is the magic of the 3565 portfolio because bonds have gone up a lot. But you never, you know, a month ago, nobody thought this could happen. Nobody thought this could happen. There's actually, in the financial world, we talk about something. It's called a black swan. And a black swan is an unforeseen event. And this was unforeseen. You just, nobody was prepared for this, which means you have to conduct your financial life in such a way that you're prepared for anything. Let me ask you a question. How much cash do you have? Like in your wallet, how much cash do you have? Do you have like 40 bucks, 100 bucks, 200 bucks? What if you're stuck at home and you can't get to the ATM? How are you going to get cash? What if they close the ATMs? I mean, you have to think of all this stuff. You know, I've talked in the past about the importance of keeping a lot of cash at home in a safe. And just, just for situations like this, because you never know. You never know. And people go after me for saying that people should have six months expenses or $10,000, whichever is lower in emergency funds and 10,000 bucks. And, and people would people say to me, that's irresponsible. How can you tell somebody to have $10,000 in emergency funds? Because they should invest that money. They should put it in the stock market. That's what people say. You should have that money in the stock market. No, you need to have $10,000 in emergency funds. That's the first thing that you do. I don't care what income level you are. You do not start investing until you have at least $10,000 in emergency funds. And either you have that in cash or you have it in the bank in a separate account. And it's emergency funds and it's just for situations like this. Because here's what happens. Now you know why you need that. Millions of people are being furloughed from their jobs. Pilots, waiters and waitresses, hospitality workers, everybody. A lot of people on the low end of the income spectrum. And they're being furloughed from their jobs. And there's no cash coming in. And you always have to be prepared for some period of time where no cash is coming in. You know, we talked about this last year with the government shutdown. You remember that the government shutdown seems like a long time ago. Government workers never thought they'd see a day when they didn't have a paycheck. And, then, and they were living paycheck to paycheck. And suddenly there was a government. It was an unforeseen event. They couldn't have predicted it. Who would have thought that a government worker would not get their paycheck? But they, suddenly they weren't getting paychecks and they were going to food banks and stuff like that because people don't prepare for unforeseen events. The, there was this guy uh, on, on Wall Street. His name was Raj Rajaratnam, and he went to jail for insider trading for like 10 years, something like that. I think they just let him out on parole. And, you know, even though he's a disgraced, he had a, he, I mean, one of his quotes was fantastic. He's like, only the paranoid survive, okay? And you have to be paranoid. And this is why, you know, today was the first day. Today was the first day in this whole bear market that my heart rate got up. I was like, ooh, man, this is getting a little scary. <laughs> I didn't, wow, this is some crazy stuff going on out there. But generally, I don't worry about stuff because I've, I'm mostly prepared for stuff like this, and that's how I conduct my financial life. And you, and in terms of your income, you, you're, things are very fragile. People underestimate how fragile the economy is, and we're just starting to see it. We're starting to see how fragile the economy is. And no matter what your line of work, you always have to be prepared for some period of time where you lose your income and no cash is coming in because you just don't know. Anyway, we'll, we'll talk about this in a few seconds. I'm Jared Dillian. This is The Jared Dillian Show. Jared Dillian. Own your money. Own your life. 